the new system has two bus bar while the old system had single bus bar the new system um, has more solar panels and more battery storage capacity the new system in addition has a PLC which records data uh, pass, it has a sampling rate of one second meaning that it records data every one second so electric activity is going on in the microgrid at the school in the school grid are being recorded by the PLC within the uh, which is the PLC inside the the switchboards this data can be used for research and it can also be used for diagnosis diagnosis if there's a fault it's easy to trace and understand uh, when the fault happened and how it happened because all these activities are recorded by the PLC and the fact that the new system uh, can be operated manually and automatic it's both an added advantage so clearly the new the energy for growing project um, the system which has been installed by the energy for growing project is superior to the old one so um, before the project the school had power sources and after the project it had the same power sources but the um, the PV, the solar PV panels and the battery banks were um, were increased and also energy is being uh, managed better so how has the school evolved or how is the how is all this energy present in the school being used um, in the school they have a, a, a water filter which a solar water filter it uses uh, solar power and batteries to uh, to filter water using uv technology another usage of energy in the system the school is for for pumping water the there's a water pump in the school which pumps water on um, many tanks about three tanks in the school some of this water is used for instance there's a tank in the school kitchen a, a nine li 900 liter tank in the school which uh, the water in that tank is connected to the the, the, the heating system of the I mean to the cooking stoves so when when the cooks are cooking food um, and heat is being dissipated out in the air it goes through the water tank and warms up water so some of this water is used for um, sanitary and also water is used for drip irrigation the school has now has a, an organic garden so uh, water is pumped from a well the school has a well so the it is pumped up into a water tank and then uh, to the garden another usage of water uh, of energy in the school is uh, for uh, pumping water into the into a fish pond so uh, this fish pond, uh, they grow fish in this pond, which we, uh, the students and the school in general can use for as food. Um, and most importantly, since the main role of the school is to teach, so at night students are able to do self-study and not to sleep in the dark so they can study also at night and they can enjoy the benefits of having this all this energy so energy is also used for lighting and also the school has photocopies and printers so and uh, 
several laptops and computers. So whenever there's a need for uh, for using those devices, they use them using the current energy or the energy in the school. Uh, all projects usually involve challenges. And in the next slide, I will talk about the different challenge which we the project has faced, and the activities going on after installing this uh, the system, and um, especially the monitoring activities and also the research activities uh, going on. Uh, as I said in earlier, the system has the system ha uh, has a a PLC which records electric activity. So this helps to monitor uh, energy use from, from the school. So this data is being analyzed and we can look at the different patterns. For instance, in this slide we can look at the we can look at the state of charge of the battery bank which has been installed. Uh, this data is very important because it can show uh, if batteries are being used in a in a healthy way, because they should not be undercharged and they also should not be overcharged. So this data can be displayed to the to the school operators and they can see how they are using energy, and it can also uh, suggest to them how to better use the energy. On the part of research, we are working to develop a software application which, um, which will be installed in, in a laptop or in a computer um, at the control room of the school or at the school site. Uh, this software will, will, uh, will use the data from the PLC and it will display to the user the it will dis display to the user consumption, uh, like the user will know how much power, how much energy they are consuming, and it will also um, offer more advanced features. It will have artificial intelligence, so it can predict the day ahead uh, consumption or generation from the power sources. And also it will offer suggestions to the user on which times of the day to use power or which loads to disconnect. So the user will be able to interact with the, with the system. So it will be a, an active system um, kind of disciplining the user on how to better use the energy. The main aim is to to make sure that the current storage system put in place will will last longer and that the user can be able to use energy when there's uh, an abundance of energy and also may be able to abstain from using energy when there's little amount so it will train the user on which hours of the days are have more energy so that it can shift all the energy intensive activities to that particular hour of the day and and do um, and consume less on a on a different part of the day when the energy is not uh, enough so uh, initial works have begun on on, on this software and this energy management software, EMS. Uh, so far, it's going to be created using MATLAB software because it's um, easily available. And to start, we've developed a preliminary version of the software which involves, um, which has the load forecasting feature and SOC forecasting feature. So it's able to, uh, to focus the next day load consumption and it's also able to focus the next day 
SOC state of charge. It's based on neural network for predicting the next day load profile or energy usage, energy consumption. And based on the next day or the next 24 hours energy consumption, we can derive the state of, uh, state of charge for the next day. And this information from the state of charge, we can look at the, the highest uh, state of charge for that next day and the lowest minimum state of charge for that next day. If the minimum state of charge is below, let's say, undesired value, let's say if it's less than 40, the user can be told to shift his energy activities to another, to a different region or a different hour of the day where the batteries will be, will have more charge. So it's, it's a system which will help the user, uh, will predict how much energy will be available to the user. It can also suggest to the user, user to disconnect some of the load to reduce some of the energy usage or to shift his, uh, the user's consumption to uh, a different part of the day. All in all is to make sure that the user man, uh, makes the, in, uses the system uh, in a better way, in a smart way. The prediction um, algorithm uh, gets inputs from the hours of the day, day of the week, holidays, temperature, and the PV, photovoltaics, and other power sources. This helps the, the, the algorithm or the software based on all these inputs to be able to predict the day ahead load. These are the first results which we've obtained and from this curve, from this curve graph, uh, it shows the output of the neural network in predicting the next day um, profile, load profile. And when you compare the next day load profile with the actual load profile, you can see that there are some similarities, but also we can see that there are some errors. So we will continue working on this system to make sure that uh, the prediction of the next day is uh, as accurate as possible. And this has been done, we hope to achieve this through um, conducting uh, survey, questionnaire survey, asking the local uh, community at the school on different questions in order to understand how they are using energy so as to better design the software in order to predict, uh, to offer prediction features. So uh, this project was, in, was, um, was conducted by Politecnico di Milano to install the system. The system is, um, uh, is on another continent, Politecnico de Milano is in, in Europe. So the challenge is to access the data because as we said, apart from installing the system, the, the energy hub is still being monitored to see that it is correctly functioning and also to conduct some research activities mentioned. So the main challenges were, was the PLC software, which we are working on um, updating it. It was supposed to save data, usage data for two months, but currently it saves, it logs data for five days. So this is a challenge. It means that if, if no one copies the data within five days, data gets overwritten or erased. So uh, another challenge is um, accessing this data. Um, because this data needs to be copied, transferred from the PLC memory to a, an, another computer. So the our first solution was to assign one of the staff to download the task, uh, to download data from the PLC. Uh, but this hasn't been efficient because sometimes we miss some of the days and 
due to the remote location of the village, it was difficult to to get that data because someone else needed to go to the village, um, maybe from the Arusha town, travel all the way to the village, which is like one hour away and very remote, and also get the data back to town and upload it via internet. So uh, this was inefficient. The, we decided a better solution to access this data was to install a, um, an internet satellite dish. So we contacted one of the local, one of the local uh, telecommunication companies offered this solution. And uh, currently the school has internet and um, there's the PLC data is downloaded, uh, is we are able to access the data remotely um, every day, uh, anytime desired. Uh, another, another important aspect of the project was was to promote to, to promote the project and to to, to the so society. So to achieve this the easiest and uh, more efficient way, way was to create a Facebook page whereby all the progress of the project was uploaded. So it was, this page was created uh, in the first days when the project started out and data was being uploaded um, periodically. So this page aims at um, interacting or it aims at bringing the, uh, the, the project to both the scientific and non-scientific people, to researchers, to all interested people. All the data about the project, uh, for instance, the data being uh, recorded by the PLC and other project data uh, are free to anyone who's interested. That's why we also created this platform. We use this Facebook Plus platform. Uh, in concluding, um, E4G project, Energy for Growing project, is very unique project because we don't have uh, many such applications in the African continent of a system which is able to manage different energy resources present in one area and offering also the kind of cap uh, the kind of uh, capability which the switchboards have of recording data so it makes it a very unique project and also the way it was deployed it involved a lot of cooperation both with companies um, in Italy and also international companies. Also the local institutions were involved, local colleges and institutions were involved in the project and are uh, continuing to be involved in the research work which is going on. The experience obtained by the E4G research team um, makes them a, an important reference point when it comes to off-grid system because um, all the challenges which had to be encountered. Um, and also the, the, pro the project is also unique in a way that that the system hasn't been installed and uh, left there. There's still a follow-up on, on the system there's still um, monitoring of the system, so we look for we look forward to more works and more outcomes from the project. Thank you for listening. Yeah, so anyone logged in can type can type the questions 
in the chat window about the presentation or about any part of the presentation which needs clarification. Yeah, yes, and uh, alternative to this, I can be reached by email. Uh, excuse me, with my email address, should I type it there? Yes, in the chat. Okay. So in the chat window, I'm providing my my email address for contact. So I need to answer by chat typing. Okay. So the question is, what is the approximate cost of installing the system in a medium-sized school? To pump water. Uh, I do not have a direct answer to this question but in general uh, to install such a system it, it, it depends whether you want to use maybe you want a solar system or whether you want a system to, to, to get its power from let's say a hydro turbine. If it's a solar system also it depends um, like the size of the tanks or it depends on uh, the distance where the water is being pumped to so maybe I need to uh, look into to do some research and to give you proper answer to your question because you can also tell me the the actual size of the of the school or so that I can be able to know the exact technologies which you can use for that and uh, the cost which you will end up um, incurring. Okay, uh, Atalia, if you could give me your email address, or I can get your email address from Daniela, I will uh, be happy to provide you the, to send you the material on um, which kind of uh, solutions and the estimated cost for such a system. I'll be very happy to, to provide you with that. Yeah. Okay. So I got I got your email. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll be I'll surely I'll contact you with the with the answer. Okay. So thanks for the questions. And uh, and for listening. For listening and and uh, here is my contact, my email address. So we hope to be in touch about this project. And uh, please be sure to visit our Facebook page because we have a lot of um, information there, and we in, we will keep on uploading more information about the project. Okay. 